Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're safe, I hope you're healthy, I hope you have a big smile on your face, and I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here. This video is going to be a very, very interesting and important video simply because it is such a perfect case study for Euro versus US dollar from um, a Wyckoff um, you know, standpoint, from a Wyckoff understanding. So we're going to go through very, very important concepts in this video, speaking mostly about accumulation and reaccumulation and how you can put yourself in the position to spot reaccumulations and know the differences between them and distribution. Now, I have one of my very good friends on this call with me right now, one of the most talented traders that we have in the community of institutional traders that we also have that you will be able to hear from a little bit later. Um, so I'm going to pass it to Adrian a little bit later on once I go through some information in terms of what accumulation and reaccumulation is and what we mean by that. But um, before we get started, a very quick disclaimer. Anything that you see in this video or in this channel for that matter is only for educational purposes, by no means requires any action. So please remember that these markets are very volatile and these markets are very risky, right? So only risk what you are willing to lose. And the information that you learn from here, you don't have to take it as fact. Do your own back testing and decide for yourself whether this is going to be a trading method that you want to follow or not. Now, if you guys enjoy the information that you see on this video right now do make sure to give us a follow on instagram if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us on our instagrams we'd be more than happy to um you know answer any of the questions that you may have or look at a few setups that you may have but with that being said let's jump straight into it so the first thing that we need to understand more than anything else is when the institutions trade and when the institutions by institutions i mean huge banks right when they want to execute their orders and buy or sell they're executing huge amounts of orders that the volume that they enter in the market is gigantic and here is what i want you to write down well i'm gonna put it like this big money cannot be hidden there will be Footprints. What I mean by that is when institutions are trading, maybe with hundreds of billions or hundreds of millions or whatever it may be, the orders are so gigantic that it's going to be leaving elements of a footprint on the charts. That is where we come in as maybe Wyckoffians or people who trade uh, institutional smart money concepts, Wyckoff concepts, right? This is where we are able to identify these footprints to be able to see where the institutions have bought or where have they sold. Now, if we can almost see this information on the charts, our entire trading game is going to be made a lot easier because instead of us, you know, trading against the bank, I've heard this phrase a lot that you're trying to beat the market or beat the banks. Obviously that never happens. It's a very wrong mentality to have when it comes to the markets. But instead of us wanting to do that, we are trading with them, right? Now these footprints, majority of the times, well, practically all the time, these footprints are in the form of accumulation or distribution. Um, schematics that occur, accumulation or distribution phases that the market kind of goes through. It's important to understand that when the big institutions want to execute their orders, they need to be able to accumulate and they need to be able to distribute. And these are the phases that the market ends up going sideways in. It doesn't have to necessarily be a very flat sideways market, but normally the market is stagnant, it's going very slow. That's your typical consolidation range, right? Within this range, the aim of those institutions will be to manipulate the retail traders out. And by retail traders, I don't necessarily just mean us who are, you know, trading with maybe a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, tens of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or maybe a few million in our, um, you know, trading account by retail. I'm actually also referring to some larger retail players as well, being maybe some hedge funds, some other financial institutions. The aim of this accumulation, the distribution phase is for um, majority of the traders to naturally be manipulated out of their positions before the market makes a substantial move in a given direction, whichever that direction may actually be. Now, um, so let's speak a little bit about accumulation. I'm not going to go into too much detail right now in terms of, um, you know, showing the schematics and break it down each and every single part of that. There is a lot of resources naturally that you can kind of go through a lot of resources that we have kind of gone through, but I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video. What I am going to write over here, however, is generally an accumulation. I look at that as a manipulation, manipulation of the lows and break a structure to the upside. 
That's generally what an accumulation is. So as the market makes its way to the downside and it enters, let's say a phase, a range of accumulation, naturally within that range, you'll be able to see that the market is manipulating the lows and starts to break structure to the upside. As the market declines, it will start to manipulate the lows and break structure to the upside. Now that's a very basic, very general understanding of the actual structure behind accumulation. As you can imagine, distribution will be the other way. That's not going to be the point of this video. As of right now, we're just going to be speaking about accumulation and reaccumulation more than anything else. So let me um, write this over here. We're going to be speaking about accumulation plus reaccumulation. Okay. Um, but that's what and what general accumulation is within a reaccumulation, as as it's quite literally described in its name, is another accumulation that happens again. So let's say the market has gone up, then it goes sideways, then it continues going up. That's a reaccumulation that has occurred in the market. The market has had a markup, has gone sideways, has gone slow, and has continued to go up. Now, initially, for this market to even have gone up in the first place, it should have accumulated over there, right? So that's your first accumulation, and that's your reaccumulation, hence the word in behind it. Okay. Now, let's see what else I have written down in my notes to go through. Let's start to break down maybe reaccumulation a little bit more. What happens in that range that the market reaccumulates? Okay. Within a reaccumulation phase, generally the theory, the understanding behind it is the big players still want to push the price higher. Maybe want to open more positions. Maybe they want to take um, um, some more traders out of the market. So what ends up happening within that general reaccumulation phase, again, is the market going sideways, the price being kept within a range, so the institutions can put themselves in the position to open more orders to be able to take this market higher and within that range also manipulate the people who might be thinking that that's the high of the market. That's the top of that range. So anyone who might be looking at this, they may think to themselves, oh, the market had a markup and it's now going sideways, it's now going silent. This is potentially going to go down. It could do, it could be a distribution, but how many times have you seen that and you've identified maybe a distribution and you have also seen that the market has indeed spiked in the opposite way? There's reasons behind that. Okay, now within a reaccumulation, within a reaccumulation, the market, same as an accumulation, it manipulates the lows and breaks the structure to the upside. But within that reaccumulation range, on top of manipulation, uh, manipulation of the lows and breaking structure to the upside, the market actually looks like a distribution the beginning at the very beginning the market indeed looks like a distribution right now this is where a lot of people get um get really confused because they are wondering hang on a second if it does indeed look like a distribution at the beginning of it how am i meant to tell the differences between a distribution and a reaccumulation this is where the general structure points come into play which we're going to go through a little bit later as i said i'm not going to you know um, spend about an hour or two just to teach exactly what accumulation and reaccumulation is there's a lot of resources that you can go through as i said feel free to reach out to us on instagram if you want access to some more stuff but let's understand the general under the general structure behind that reaccumulation when this reaccumulation happens it does give you points that it looks like a distribution at the beginning okay as i've written over there meaning what as this market starts to make its way higher and higher and higher it could give you your preliminary supply from that preliminary supply it can even give you your bias climax automatic rally automatic reaction sorry secondary test and your sign of weakness but what, ends up but what ends up happening after this, instead of necessarily getting your you know, UT and UTAD for this to then be a and complete distribution phase, you will start to be able to identify a complete change in the structure of the market. You'll be able to start to identify a structure shift. You'll start to be able to see that the market does not look like it's about to drop, it looks like about to go up. So if I wanna write this down so you guys can back test it for yourself in your own time. First half. And look like a distro. Second half can look 
I can accumulation, right? First half can look like a distribution and the second half can look like an accumulation. So you start to see that when these reaccumulations are occurring at the very beginning, it does look like uh, a distribution, but towards the end of that general um, schematic being formed, or general phase in the market, it turns into an accumulation, right? Now, um, in terms of how you can identify the differences between these, I'm not necessarily going to be showing any of the um, schematics right now. We're not going to be going through actual um, points, actual schematics, because that's not the point. I don't want um, you know, people to just remember a picture or remember a schematic. It's, it's important to understand the actual philosophy behind it. So spend time, understand the philosophy behind Wyckoff. Uh, and then once you do, you'll be able to spot how within a reaccumulation, the market changes from a distribution phase into uh, a, 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 an accumulation phase, right? Now, the final and probably one of the most important thing that I'm gonna cover right now is going to be the idea behind a preliminary supply, the idea behind a creek and a shakeout, okay? I'm just gonna very quickly go through these before we look at some chart examples. So your preliminary supply, when it comes to a distribution or an accumulation or reaccumulation for that matter, your preliminary supply or your PSY, as you see that we mark it up, is that final point of supply. Is that, well, not, maybe not the final, but the first point of supply, let's say, right? The final push to the upside that these institutions have had before some sell orders have been opened and some positions have been released. It's as if it's that first bit that um, some sell positions are entering the market, right? That's the first initial um, you know, move that we can start to see that maybe that is where this market has started to um, you know, enter a supply phase. That's your kind of preliminary supply over there. That's where after that preliminary supply that has been created right over there, the market then moves into your potential bias climax, automatic rally, automatic reaction, secondary test and sign of weakness, right? Bias climax, automatic reaction, secondary test, sign of weakness, and then following that UT and UTAD for distribution, right? Now that's the idea behind that preliminary supply. It's gonna be the same in a reaccumulation as it is within a distribution, okay? Now, as this market starts to develop kind of more and more and more and more, what it ends up happening, what it ends up doing rather, is that it gives you shake out, and it might actually provide a few different areas that retail traders have been shaken out of the market right so it's literally what it stands for the shakeout can actually be looked at the same way as we look at a spring and um, the idea behind it is to shake out the retail traders and again by retail traders i don't mean just um you know people who are trading with their own capital like us trading with our own money in our trading account it could be let's say hedge funds as well some larger players in the market right so the point of that shakeout is to shake out any uh, any of the early buyers or anyone um who you know had um buy positions open the idea behind that shakeout is once the market starts to maybe go below some lows is shaking out people anyone who looked to buy it or anyone who had buy positions open they don't want to be in their positions again or anymore so they would start to either close their positions or be completely shaken out of it now a creek is the the best way i can describe it a creek is um in the in the in a in a um reaccumulation we're talking right now right within a reaccumulation the creek is simply let's say a line a mean of the highs that have been created let's say right before we get our final manipulation or right before the market starts to have that markup phase right so as we go through this let's say general reaccumulation okay um within that reaccumulation this market we expect it to go higher so a lot of the times we'll end up seeing that creak before we end up getting that final push to the downside or the creak occurs before the market starts to move to the upside now, the idea behind that creek is actually very simple and very straightforward. The idea behind that creek is an area in the market that these highs are being kind of connected with each other. It's as if the market is maybe trending a little bit downwards, going within a zone. It's, the description of it is a line connecting these highs with each other. So once we are breaking above that line, once we are you know, trading above that range, that's where we can be like, okay, cool. The market has clearly had enough demand for it to break that level, for it to break that creek, jump across it. And that's where we can know that, cool, this is where we can now start to execute our orders. After creek, as I said, sometimes you'll get that manipulation before it jumps across it and it goes up, but it's the same idea. It's the same thing. 
Creek, identifying that is going to be very, very, very helpful to your trading simply because identifying that Creek allows you to be able to see that where this market is um, about to either manipulate and go higher or where should you be waiting for some type of a break of structure, some type of a change in the momentum of the market for you to then be able to execute the orders that you want to be executing, right? Now, that's a very general basic understanding of an accumulation uh, and, a, a, and a reaccumulation for that matter. I didn't even go through the schematics. And as I said, we're not going to necessarily do that right now. The point of this video is to give a real chart example and a beautiful breakdown on euro versus the US dollar for everyone to be able to backtest this in, your, in, the, in their own times, have a look at it yourself and see if you can identify the same things or more for that matter, right? So that's not going to be what I am going to be going through. However, that's exactly why we have a, a very, very special individual on the this call right now um, recording this video with me as we speak uh, individual that goes by the name of Adrian as I mentioned he's someone that I have very high high respect for simply because they are so good he's so good at what he does he looks at the market and analyzes it from an institutional perspective like an absolute beast one of the most talented traders that we have within our community so pay very very close attention to this euro usd example that uh, adrian is about to go through right now because it's a fantastic case study to be able to see accumulation and the fractal um, accumulation reaccumulation and the fractal nature of the market so with that being said adrian i'm gonna go ahead and pass it to you Cool. Um, I think my my screen is sharing right now. Yeah, it's all good. No, perfect, guys. Uh, thank you very much for. Uh, I'm actually going to thank Pips for having me uh, on this video, and I'm actually very excited. I'm so glad to be here to actually share with you the uh, share the, the the kind of concepts we've been studying uh, for the past while, and and to be actually to actually being able to to catch a few trades. So um, um again. What Pips of Persia went through, that's like a quick introduction, obviously, and but nothing, you, you're, not, you're not really gonna understand the concepts unless you see them happening on the charts. Spending the, the like what, what, what uh, Mehdi uh, told you right there, it it's, makes perfect sense, but how you actually become uh, good at trading it and seeing it um, happen before you, before you uh, seeing, seeing actually, no, no, I'm gonna put it this way. Being able to take trades, it's by keep practicing it, okay? So the charts, the charts is everything. That's where you actually have to go back test and, and keep seeing it happen again and again and again and again. So in this example, as Mr. Pips of Pleasure said, we're actually gonna go through EURUSD because it's such a perfect, actually, um, I don't wanna say perfect, because nothing's perfect in the markets, but it's such a good example. It's such a good case study for everyone to kind of, that is looking to trade this style or these concepts. It's such a good case study for people to go through and back test and see how we actually play it out. So going back from, um, from the beginning, right? So again, the, the whole idea of a, of a reaccumulation, so I'm just gonna mark up the box. This is kind of our reaccumulation right there, okay? And uh, put back around to zero. It's the red, um, so it's kind of visible for you guys. So you can. So this is kind of our zone of reaccumulation. The very first distinctive, uh, the first stage of reaccumulation is is that the first half. Okay, like be, I just want to be pay attention to the details I'm, 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 or to the words I'm going to use here. The first half of a reaccumulation tends to have the characteristics of a distribution. Okay, I'm going to say that again. The, the first half of a reaccumulation tends to have some characteristics of a distribution. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect like a distribution. I'm not saying it's going to be, look exactly like the usual schematics you, you might find um, um, online or through some, through some um, sources out there. But that's the whole idea of a reaccumulation for the first half to look and to share some characteristics of, of a distribution. So you can see the way I'm actually going to um, use this. Um, tool right here right there perfect there we go um, now I'm gonna be honest with you guys when I first saw this at this stage uh, when I was looking at EU I'm not gonna lie I thought I thought that's it I think we're gonna go bearish I think and I think uh, we've reached our top we found our top and we're gonna keep uh, trending downwards and I'm gonna tell you the reason why I thought that because as we're taught is we're gonna have a, a high a low a lower high and a low low. And that's kind of our basic understanding of structure. 
And when we see this kind of ABC kind of correction, we would expect to have our third uh, correction and our impulsive left of the downside and keep seeing this, okay? Because this is our whole understanding of structure. And to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw this, when this first played out, I was like, okay, so we, we had this, and then we had our little pullback, we had a higher high, and then we, we had the break of structure. And that's when I thought that, that's it, I think we're gonna trend downwards, we're gonna see this kind of price action. But we didn't. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna show you how this actually, how, how I changed my bias from a bearish to actually realizing that this is actually a reaccumulation and we're gonna see higher prices. Um, I'm just gonna go do this right here. So when I said, let, let's just focus on this part right here. And when I said that the first half looks like a distribution. So in a distribution, our first kind of point is, is our preliminary supply, our PSY, as you can see it's marked right here. The second one is our bias climax with an automatic reaction. Cause you can see the way um, the kind of market found its top and then kind of collapses to the downside really quick. And this is our first reaction, okay? And um, that's why it's called an automatic reaction. And then after this, what we can see is we have a, kind of like a secondary test or you can call it an trust because the market found uh, reacted and then as soon as it hit kind of this level in the market it went up really quick therefore this is kind of our secondary test or our up trust now you can see the way this kind of psy bca or an st they this starts this is starting to look like 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 a distribution and to be honest some people probably thought that mike is going to uh, 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 go down form a UT, come down again, form a UTAD, and an LPSY, and keep going down. But that didn't happen. Again, we, this is a, 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 a reaccumulation. I'm, I'm, we're gonna go through the details really quick and fast to actually explain how this is a reaccumulation. So as many said, we have our kind of mean averages of the high, okay? So we have this kind of creek, and you can see the way we have our shakeout. The shakeout, or it's, it's another name for the spring, that's at like our lowest point within the reaccumulation. And at this point, the shakeout is formed for one reason. Hence, you have, it has the name shake. Because we're, at this point, we're shaking every early buyers. Everyone that was buying early in the market, we're taking them out first. Because we, at this point, everyone's kind of confused. So we kind of shake them out of the market really quick for us to just jump a really, cool, uh, really quick across the creek. So this is potentially, we can kind of classify this as a potential sign of strength. And the reason why it's a sign of strength because this is the first early stage in the market where where the where price is literally showing us that we're ready to move higher because we had this general um, um, uh, kind of line of the highs, our creek, or you can just focus on this one right here, just kind of make it easier to understand. And then you can see how the how market just really aggressively had this bull run. So this is therefore we consider this as our first little sign, our first sign early in the stage of a reaccumulation. Um, the price is probably preparing itself to go higher. So what we know is that when we have a shakeout and when we have a creek, right, um, we want to see a test of that because um, it doesn't always have to do that because we, we, we can have, um, um, we can have um, um, accumulation, reaccumulation without shakeouts, without actually tests, which is just really basic and really like shoots up in the skies. But when we saw this, because it's such a big actually play happening on, on, the, on the four hour, I should say, and when we saw the shakeout, we want to see a test of the shakeout, okay? And, and again, the shakeout is another name for spring. And even in the accumulation, we see when we have a, a spring, we want to see a test. And this is where I think this is probably the most amazing part of this reaccumulation because the market didn't really just come down and test the zone and just start to go up. What it did was, and which I think is the most phenomenal part of this, is that the test, our test of this shakeout, it was actually manifested through a accumulation. And I'm gonna show you, and I, that's actually the, 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 I'm gonna probably say the sexy part of the reaccumulation. And I'm just gonna play and see, I'm gonna um, explain it really quick how, how that actually played out. So do you know what, as I said at the start, like at the start, I thought this was gonna trend down. But as soon as I saw this jump across the creek, and when I saw the price start to accumulate right here, so this whole accumulation is actually a test of this shakeout. So now you can see the way we have an accumulation happening within a reaccumulation. So that accumulation right here is actually just a test for this shakeout. Um, 
And just to break down this uh, accumulation right here, you can see that um, on the one hour, I think I'm gonna do on one hour so it's easier to kind of see it. You can kind of really quick um, uh, just kind of label them. So you can see that this like, would be our typical seller's climax, automatic rally, secondary test, potential sign of strength, secondary test phase B, and our spring lower because this spring went down to actually wick every with the liquidity that was sitting underneath these lows right here so that's why it's because i know i understand the, the 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 whole idea behind it instead of me actually labeling them out i just went back to the four hour and i classified this whole zone as a test area and this single wick as a spring but again just just for practicing and keep actually understanding is understanding how, how the wyckoff methodology works you can actually go on the one hour and label them so you so you can actually so your subconscious mind always always learns them and knows where they are. But because I knew, I kind of knew this is our shakeout and this is our test, I just named this whole zone as a test area. Very simply, test area, spring, went higher to break our structure, take the liquidity, come back down, and then here, here it goes again, guys. The same story. So we have our shakeout, a test manifested through a spring, then we have a spring uh, going higher then we have a test of this spring manifested through another accumulation so now you can see the way we have a four like let me go back to the four hour now you can see the way we have a four hour reaccumulation with a one hour accumulation and with a 15 minute accumulation so you can see the way they happen again and again and again so the whole idea again of, of, of accumulating market is that the market is stagnant okay it, it goes sideways and you can kind of identify this uh, as a or kind of like our seller's climax, automatic reaction, um, um, uh, secondary test, potential sign of strength, SD phase B, spring to then go higher. I don't need to label them now, but because I understand what's happening here, I know, I know the price is going to go uh, higher. And I know that this is a level of demand. And um, when you understand these concepts, you don't, because you actually know how the market is going to play out, you don't need to be the first one in the market you don't have to be the first one to actually pull the trigger and, and be in the trade because patience is what pays guys um so i'm going to show you the moves that we're able to catch and, and i'm going to show you how these phases of accumulating and reaccumulation keep happening again and again and again and again and i'm going to show you how you might be able when, when you actually understand the concepts how you're able to actually partake in the market so uh let me go to the two hour so when i saw uh, this accumulating we probably have another accumulation right here, so you can see the way they happen again. And guys, I like I wish I, I was able to go through them all and probably in detail, but because I want to make this nice, really quick and simple, I don't really we don't really have the time so I, like uh, to actually go in detail of, of how the SC, the spring and the tests work. But we can see generally when market goes sideways to then push higher, this has to be some sort for some form of a, a accumulation because market was kind of sideways for it just to go higher. So we feel sideways to if, if the market was sideways so it didn't go higher, that means there's some form of accumulation. And the same happened here and here to then, to, then, to, to then go higher. So I saw this price action happening right here. And I saw the way that this price action from, from this point, uh, yeah, till where are you? From this point up to this point, price was fair. And what, my, what I mean by fair is that the price was actually trading traded uh, 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 on both sides. And the, by that I mean we had a, a relatively similar amount of buyers and sellers in, in the market. Because we had some imbalances, they were filled. We had some gaps, they were filled. And that's when I, I was trying to dig deeper and dissect the market and start to look for entries. And it wasn't until this point, I'm actually going to leave the drone uh, so I can show really quick. It was... This were actually starting to pay a lot of attention because I saw the way the market had a, a very bullish leg. So that's a rally. We had our base and then we had our second leg, which uh, actually third uh, rally. So we had this whole idea of a rally base rally. So this candlestick right here, best believe I can guarantee that this candlestick, if I was to go on the five minute time frame, this candlestick is going to show me a sideways market. Because that's the whole that's that's the whole idea of a reaccumulation. You have you have an extensive uh, a, a very impulsive leg, market going sideways and then going up again. And that's the whole idea. That's literally um, reaccumulation described in one candle <laughs> or three candles, I should say. We have um, we have bullish action, market uh, stalls, and then we go up again. And that's how I know that this right here, it's a level of demand. 
because if I go back on the on the 15 minute time frame, you're you're gonna see how this single uh, green box and this single candle on the five minute, it's actually what? Well, it's an accumulation. You see the way the market was sideways. So on the two hour, this price action right here was just one bullish. Uh, let, yeah, let me use the brush actually. This action price action right here was just a one big bullish candle. This was that little um, a, a bearish candle that I showed you. And then this was the, the third candle, which was on the two hour, would actually um, shows up as, as a one single bullish candle. So now you, now you can see the whole idea of, um, of how rally base rally works. And it's kind of the same for, for, for drop base drops. Um, but in this case, we're going to focus on, on rally based rallies because we're talking about accumulations and reaccumulations. So you can see that the way on the two hour, let me go back again really quick. You can see the way we have a leg to the upside, we've stalled, we base it, so it's a rally based rally. And then on the five minute or 15 minute, you can see that that actually base, it's actually market going stagnant, it's market going sideways. So that's how I know that, there is a, that this is a level of demand. So whenever price, if price does ever reach the zone, if price ever comes back here, I know that Adrian, you should probably look for buys. Because whenever price would probably go in the zone, market would probably might, I'm not saying it always does, but it might show me signs of accumulation to actually go higher. And that's exactly what we got. And I'm going to show you how I actually got to that point where I realized that this is an accumulation. Um, let me, yeah, let me just play it really quick up to that point. Um, there we go. Just stop it there. Perfect. Can, uh, actually, yeah, delete this as well. You can see the way the first half, okay? So when the market had an extensive leg, it based extensive leg, market starting to slow down and come back down. And you can, I, I'm pretty sure you can all agree that this kind of price action was very aggressive. The way market came down so quick and fast, that was like, that was kind of like a falling knife. You don't, you do not want to buy against a falling knife because uh, you might get hurt. Um, but let's focus on the second part. Like we came down very aggressively, but as soon as we get close to this demand zone, you can see that the way the market is actually starting to slow down. Look at the candlesticks they're from, guys. Look at look at the way. Um, look look at the first. Look look. Actually, do you know what? I'll, put, I'll put it this way. Look how many candles it took to come this low, and then look how many candles it took to actually spend around this time. So you can see the way this is so aggressive, coming really fast, really sharp down. But then as soon as we get close to this demand zone, this reaccumulation, we start to actually slow down. And when we slow down, we can potentially identify this as a zone of accumulation. So now you can see, guys, the way we have a, a, a four-hour reaccumulation, a one-hour accumulation, and then we have another one-hour accumulation, another one-hour accumulation, then we have a two-hour um, um, uh, reaccumulation with another um, um, accumulation testing this demand zone. So you can see the way this is actually so fractal. It keeps happening again and again and again and again. And it's just a matter of training your eye to see to seeing them happening again and again. And then if if when you get to a level, you're able to profit from them. From them. Um, so you can go back to this. You can see price is really aggressive, but this zone market is starting to, sh to slow down so this was my sign this one i was like adrian i think you i think we're getting ready i think the, the long positions are starting to are starting to set up um and that's one really quickly i don't have to go into detail because it's really understanding the, the whole idea of accumulation this red line will be my seller's climax this will be my secondary test in phase b and then the final push lower is going to be my spring because this spring took every single low out of the market took every point of liquidity and then as soon as it bases as soon as it finds its low i was able to catch an entry based on the one minute and the four minute i think it was the one minute break of structure and the four minute point of interest so on the one minute um right there actually need to play this really quick there yeah, right there. So we can see the way we have our first touch, second, and third. And from a kind of way, from a structural kind of point of, um, of view, you can see the way we have a, a low, a high, a high low, and a high high. And that's when I know, because, and, and now let's put the puzzle all together, because some of you might say, well, this, this wasn't enough to tell me that I should actually pull the trigger and go for a buy. But because we identified 
everything that happened on the high time frames, including this rally based rally, knowing that this base is actually a zone of reaccumulation and the zone of reaccumulation actually means demand. And because we saw the price actually um, start to slow down and, and this accumulation didn't happen randomly. It didn't happen down here or up here. It actually happened as we we're approaching this very kind of uh, reactive zone of demand. And that's when I knew, that's when like on the one minute, seeing this type of uh, price action of, of high highs and high lows, that was enough for me to tell me that you should buy in the zone because I am buying at the right place in the market. This, like analyzing this, the, the two hour and the 15 minute told me that you are buying in the right place in the market. So just from, again, from a st uh, structure point of view, you can see you have a, a low, a high, you want to buy the pullback. You don't want to buy anywhere randomly here because price is going to slam you down. You want to buy as low as you can in a pullback because so you can get the best discount price to actually go higher. And that's exactly how we did that. That's how we were able to, to actually understand where will, the, where will the market, where is that pullback, the low of the pullback is going to happen. And we kind of identify it's going to happen within this range because there's a reaccumulation. Because as soon as price comes in the zone, we expect price to go higher. So again, go back to the four minute. And this was kind of my point of interest. And uh, these two bearish candles right here, I'm not going to go too much into detail why, but these candles right here all kind of represent a, a, a institutional kind of uh, um, a price action because the uh, market was sold to then buy and, and form a higher high. So with, with the one minute break of structure, and with, with the four uh, minute kind of uh, uh, point of interest, all I needed to know, all I needed to see was price come back here, tap this zone really quick, and then go away. And again, like look at look because this is such a strong level of demand. Look how price reacted, guys. Like look look how how as soon as it come in the zone, it just flew up to the sky. Let's play this out and see how we actually went. Can you see that, guys? Literally, as soon as it got in the entry, you can see that the next candle was straight up and bullish price action ever. So that just clarifies, that, that just tells me, that proves to me one more time that I, was a, I identified the right level of demand in the market. Because, because the price was so aggressive, bullish, going to the upside, actually breaking this high because um, this was, uh, I, was, I was able to catch a 113 and 123. And our, my 113 was just to take the liquidity at this high. And then 123 was based on the one hour, I think, just to take um, these lonely highs that were just after the secondary test that happened within the bigger four hour reaccumulation. Um, so this is kind of the, the idea of, of, of being able to understand pure um, um, uh, raw price action. Because if you understand where the demand and the supply is and how the big players in the market are starting to accumulate and reaccumulate their, their positions, you are able to actually know what the price is more likely going to do as soon as, he, as, soon as it reaches, uh, it gets to that zone. And that's exactly what we're able to identify. And that's exactly... The, these, these are the concepts we've been studying, we've been backtesting, and again and again and again. So when they happen again, we're able to actually know that, oh my God, this is actually going to go up. We're able to, we're able, we're able to, I don't want to say the word predict because we're not wizards here, but we're able to say that at this level, the market might have some sort of a reaction to the upside and we're confident taking any trades right here. Um, and this, this is how we played out, guys. You can see the way, um, again, putting the puzzle together just going back to the front from the very start and if you can you can actually play this video in your own time and count how many times we found accumulations or reaccumulations happening within this whole zone so let, let, let me just recap this really quick so the four hour we have our big reaccumulation and the, and the, and the distinct, distinctive part is that the first half looks like a distribution and we have our key kind of um, uh, points and then the second half, we start to look like a accumulation. We, we tend to have the characteristics of accumulation when we have a creek, our shakeout, and our kind of jump across the creek. And then, so we had our reaccumulation. Then we have our accumulation that was part of the test of this shakeout. And then we have on the one hour more accumulation. No, delete that. Um, and then we have more accumulation that was part of this brain. Price went uh, higher, creating higher high, came back down, reaccumulated again, went up to make another higher high, came back down, uh, tested this uh, the demand zone, going back up. We had a fair 
um, a very kind of fair and equal kind of price action between buyers and sellers. And then we see again on the 15 minute time frame, another small zone of reaccumulation, price going higher, price coming back down, accumulating slowly, giving us the entry to then go higher. And then if we let this play out, actually we see more examples of, uh, of how market actually reaches, uh, uh, actually um, gets at certain points of, of demand and, and, um, and um, accumulations. Actually, let me stop. Let me go on this on the hard time frame. Um, play this really quick. I'm just going to actually do this right here. Perfect. Um, and again, going back to the two hour guys, you can see that when we have a, a rally based rally, market did its own thing. And then guess what? We have another rally based rally. Therefore, this zone right here, let me just take these uh, long position tools out of the way. So we have our first rally based rally market doing its thing going higher. And then when it goes higher, the market forms another level of reaccumulation or a zone of demand, I should say, a rally, a base, and a rally. So when price comes back here ever again, we know that we should have some potential to go to the upside. And that's exactly what we did. You can see like our first test was actually here. Market just tapped the zone with a single wick, a single wick, and you can see the market just went up really fast, really aggressively. And then the market came back down to probably fill some positions um, uh, or mitigate some positions out of this uh, 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 bearish candlestick to actually form a potential accumulation to actually go higher. So you can see the way market, this was our first little test, our first kind of sign of, of kind of possible uh, uh, bullish momentum. This was, this was our first test before the market, uh, before the market actually come in again, accumulating properly it's because the institutions want to get discount prices, so they want to accumulate as long as they can in this demand zone, in this kind of discount price zone, to then go higher again. And that's exact, exactly what it did. And then that's how we're able to identify these zones of, 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 um, of accumulation and these zones of demand and really understanding what the big players in the market are trying to do and how we are able to actually understand um, um, their kind of step-by-step uh, process of, 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 of taking prices to, to certain levels in the market um, because the big money they leave footprints like you know when you see an elephant walking in mud because the elephant's so big you're gonna know an elephant walked in the mud so it's the same here when we see kind of these levels we know that the big players are behind it these because this is this didn't happen on like one second time frame. This happened on the four hour, on the daily. You can see the way if you break, if you take the, the, this, uh, the whole thing, you can see the way markets start to accumulate. So this is a very big footprint. So the institutions are giving us a hint, are leaving behind something to, for us to actually understand what they're doing. So we can actually be able to, to actually enter, pull the trigger on some of these trades and actually go with the wave. So again, this is, this is, um, these, these are the concepts we're, we're, we're trying to, to master. We keep perfecting them on, the, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, uh, and I hope, guys, we, you found this kind of case study. And I encourage you, if you trade this style, and if you want to trade this style, definitely go back to this pair and definitely try to understand the, the highs and the lows and how the accumulation and reaccumulation keep happening again and again and again for you to understand. Because this is such a good example that I, I best believe... That when you actually see this, so if you understand this, okay, when you understand what happened, when you understand what happens here, next time we're going to see something similar to this happening probably in a different pair, best believe you actually might not miss it because you've seen it happening in the past. Because you've seen it happening in the past, you're going to be able to say, hold on a second, I've seen this before. I know something similar happened to you and I know the outcome of this is a schematic. I know that if I'm able to spot the schematic, I know the outcome on EU was bullish. So if I see the same kind of situation happen on a different pair, you know what the possible outcome might be. So this is, this is all done through a series of backtesting and spending the time on the charts, really understanding the concepts of, of, of the bigger players in the market. Because again, guys, um, you cannot, as, as Pips of Persia said, you, you, Pips of Persia said, you cannot beat the banks. <laughs> you, you will never say, I trade against the market. You just, you can't do that. You, you can't because the, the, the banks control everything. So if you're able to understand what the bigger players are doing, then you will actually, trading will be a hell out of fun. It's going to be a lot 
like you're you're gonna understand it a lot better because you know how actually price moves and why. Like actually behind this methodology of trading, the reason we don't actually try to just point things out. We try to understand the why, the reason behind it. Because we, once you understand the reason behind a certain move, you'll understand the future possible outcome. And that's very, very important, guys. And to be honest, that's kind of everything. I'm, 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 I'm so happy. I'm so excited to be here alongside Mr. Pixel Persia, my, my, my friend, my mentor. We, we study together. We, we learn together. We trade together. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to actually share this case study with you guys and how I actually play, play it out. And, and I hope you find this useful. And I'm looking forward to do the next one and, and see what we can actually catch together, guys. So um, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay safe out there. I know we were living through troubling times right now so make sure you're safe look after yourself your family stay healthy and i wish you the best of luck in everything you do guys i appreciate you adrian thank you very 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 much let me very quickly wrap it up by saying this to everyone as well let me write this down here so you can see it for yourself screenshot it for yourself if need be understand that when it comes to these markets patience is key as adrian said himself these markets require patience it's simply a transfer of wealth from the impatient to the patient. As simple as that. So be within the range of patience. Don't try and get involved in these markets and to get rich quick. That is genuinely not how it works. Put the hours in. It's a skill set to learn. Understand that it takes hundreds of hours, thousands of hours for you to get to the levels that you want to get to. It might even take tens of thousands of hours, right? Know that there's a, it's a journey involved in it. But the outcome is worth it so long as you put yourself in the position to be consistent, to go through the correct information when it comes to it, okay? Surround yourself with the correct people, with the individuals that have the same mindset as you, that has, have the same ambitions as you. It makes it really, it's a business at the end of the day, right? So treat it like one. When it comes to any type of entrepreneurship or business, you have to be around like-minded individuals and get away from the negativity people might give you, okay? Be, be um, always around traders that maybe you look up to or maybe you want to be um, you know, trading on their level at, uh, at some point or at least they have the same mindset as you, right? And number four is never give up. You're going to be challenged a lot in this journey a lot. A lot of times you're going to be challenged and go through adversity. But the point is to always know where you're headed and simply never give up. Put the hours in. Now, um, before we wrap up the call, just one very quick thing that I wanted to say is that you hear a lot how maybe, you know, 99% of the traders don't make it and 99% of the people who, you know, trade Forex, they don't make money. Please understand that in no way that makes your chance of success 1%. Just because 99% might not make it, that doesn't mean your chance of success is 1%. That simply means you have to do what the 99%, 99% don't. You have to invest in yourself, invest into your education, invest into your future. As simple as that, right? So make sure to approach this whole industry with the correct mindset. Thank you very much again, Adrian, for sharing this beautiful um, breakdown of EURUSD, one of the most amazing kind of uh, amazing, let's say, breakdowns of reaccumulation and accumulation that I have seen before. It's a fantastic example for you all to um, study in your own time as well. Uh, but if there's any questions, feel free to uh, drop it in the comments below or reach out to us on Instagram. Let us know what you thought of this breakdown as well in the comment section down below. Um, let us know if you managed to actually identify this yourself in your own time as well, or whether, whether you are new into these concepts. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a very, very fantastic trading week. Uh, it's currently Monday, 20th of July, 2020. So it's the first day of the week that the markets have opened. So let's, let's, let's keep it up. Let's keep going with the, um, with the uh, correct mentality. For those of you who are already partnered up with us, make sure to spend time on uh, our live sessions and that you're kind of given practically every single day to learn the knowledge as much as you can. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, take care. And let's, let's catch some pips. Let's go.